Make Way for Ducklings by Robert Miklowski, The Viking Press, New York. Another read aloud story from Grandma Eggie and Poppy, also known as Peg and Jeff Babcock. Mr. and Mrs. Mallard were looking for a place to live. Quack, quack. But every time Mr. Mallard saw what looked like a nice place, Mrs. Mallard rah, rah, said it was no good. There were sure to be foxes in the woods and, or turtles in the water, and she was not going to raise a family where there might be foxes or turtles. So they flew on and on. When they got to Boston, they felt too tired to fly any further. Well, there was a nice pond in the public garden with a little island on it. Quack, quack, quack. The very place to spend the night, quacked Mr. Mallard. So they flapped, or they, so down they flapped. Well, the next morning, they fished for their breakfast in the mud at the bottom of the pond. Quack, 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 but they didn't find much. Just as they were getting ready to start on their way, a strange, enormous bird came by. And it was pushing a boat full of people, and there was a man standing on its back. Quack, 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 good morning, quack, quack. Mr. Mallard quacked, being polite. But the big bird was too proud to answer. But the people on the boat threw peanuts into the water. So the mallards followed them all round the pond and got another breakfast, better than the first one. Oh, quack, 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 I like this place, said Mrs. Mallard as they climbed out on the bank and waddled along why why don't we build a nest uh, and raise our ducklings right here in this pond? There are no foxes and, and no turtles, and the people feed us peanuts. What could be better? Quack, quack, good, said Mr. Mallard, delighted that at last Mrs. Mallard had found a place that suited her. But... Ding, 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 ding. Look out, look out, squawked Mrs. Mallard, all of a dither. You'll get run over. And when she got her breath, she added, This is no place for babies with all those horrid things rushing about. We'll have to look somewhere else. So they flew over Beacon Hill and round the State House, but there was no place there. They looked in Louisburg Square, but there was no water to swim in. And then they flew over the Charles River. Quack, quack, quack. This is better quacked Mr. Mallard. This island looks like a nice quiet place. Eh, and it's only a little way from the public garden. Quack, quack, yes, said Mrs. Mallard, remembering the peanuts. That looks just like the right place to hatch our ducklings. So, they chose a cozy spot among the bushes near the water and they settled down to build their nest. And only just in time, for now they were beginning to molt. All their old wing feathers started to drop out and they would not be able to fly again 
until the new ones grew in. Oh, Mrs. Mallard sitting on a, desk, a, a nest there, right? But of course they could swim and one day they swam over to the park on the river bank and there they met a policeman called Michael and Michael fed them peanuts and after that the Mallards called on Michael quack 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 every day. Well after Mrs. Mallard had laid eight eggs in the nest. You can see them there. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. She couldn't go visit Michael anymore because she had to sit on the eggs to keep them warm. And she moved off the nest only to get a drink of water or to have her lunch or to count the eggs and make sure they were all there. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Well, one day, the ducklings hatched out. First came Jack, then came Cack, and then Lack, and then Mac, and Knack, and Quack, and, and, no, Whack, and Pack, and Quack. Mr. and Mrs. Mallard were bursting with pride. It was a great responsibility taking care of so many ducklings, and it kept them very busy. One day, Mr. Mallard decided he'd like to take a trip to see what the rest of the river was like further on. So, he set off. Quack, quack, I'll meet you in a week in the public garden, he quacked over his shoulder. Now you take good care of uh, our ducklings. Quack, quack, don't worry, don't you worry, said Mrs. Mallard. I know all about bringing up children, and, and, and she did. She taught them how to swim, splash, quack, beep, beep, quack, beep, 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 quack, 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 and to, to dive and to eat bugs. And she taught them to walk in a line, to come when they were called and to keep a safe distance from bikes and scooters and other things with wheels. When at last she felt perfectly satisfied with them, she said one morning, quack, 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 come along children, follow me. And before you could wink an eyelash, Jack, Cack, Whack, Mac, Knack, Quack, pack, and quack fell into line, just as they had been taught. Mrs. Mallard led the way into the water, and they swam behind her to the opposite bank. There they waded ashore and waddled along till they came to beep, beep, pop, pop, beep, beep, the highway. Mrs. Mallard stepped out to cross the road. Honk, honk, went the horns on the speeding cars. Quack, quack, went Mrs. Mallard as she tumbled back. Quack, 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 could quack. The cars kept speeding by and honking. Honk, honk, beep. And Mrs. Mallard and the ducklings kept right on. Quack, 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 quack. Well, they made such a noise that Michael came running, waving his arms and blowing his whistle. Tweet, tweet, tweet! He planted himself in the center of the road, raised one hand to stop the traffic, and then he beckoned with the other. 
the way policemen do, for Mrs. Mallard to cross over. Now, as soon as Mrs. Mallard and the ducklings were safe on the other side and on their way down Mount Vernon Street, Michael rushed back to his police booth. And he called Clancy at headquarters and he said, Hey, hey, there's a family of ducks walking down the street. And Clancy said, Family of ducks? What? Ducks? Ducks, yelled Michael. Send a police car, quick. Meanwhile, Mrs. Mallard had reached the corner bookshop and turned into Charles Street with Jack, Cack, Lack, Mac, Knack, Quack, Pack, and Quack all marching in line behind her. Everyone stared. An old lady from Beacon Hill said, Oh, oh, isn't it amazing? And the man who swept the streets said, Well, well now, ain't that nice? And when Mrs. Mallard heard them, she was so proud, she tipped her nose in the air and walked along with an extra swing in her waddle. When they came to the corner of Beacon Street, there was the police car with four policemen that Clancy had sent from headquarters. And the policemen held back the traffic so Mrs. Mallard and the ducklings could march across the street. Quack, 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 and into the public garden. Quack, 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 quack. Inside the gate, they all turned around to say thank you to the policeman. Quack, 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 quack. The policeman smiled and waved goodbye. And when they reached the pond and they swam across to the little island, there was Mr. Mallard waiting for them, just as he had promised. Well, the ducklings liked the new island so much that they decided to live there. And all day long, they follow the swim boats and eat peanuts. And when night falls, they swim to their little island and they go to sleep. Oh, read by former Alaskan teacher, Jeff Bab, that's me, Jeff Babcock. And they lived happily ever 